Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're talking about how to fill your crack. Often with woodworking, we don't get the perfectly beautiful straight grain pieces of wood we always like to have. Sometimes they have some bug holes in them, sometimes they have knots, sometimes they have cracks, and other little imperfections you'd like to fill. But first you need to ask yourself, do I really need to fill that? Because for some reason when it comes to woodworking, people think that the surface needs to be perfectly smooth and perfectly flat without any imperfection. The truth of the matter is, it's wood. There are going to be micro imperfections no matter what you do. Unless you're going to be putting a big film coat on it to make it perfectly smooth, uh, you know, filling it doesn't always need to be done. Sometimes it's nice, but you don't always have to fill it. If it's a hand tool for the shop or something I'll be having around me, I usually don't go through the trouble of it. I kind of like the feel and texture you get with an open piece of wood. But if it's going to be the dining room table and there's going to be water dumping on it or other things or I'm going to be giving it to someone else, then I, I'm generally going to fill it because that just makes me feel good. It kind of fills that void inside of me. The most common one for me are bug holes. I, I do a lot of work with wood that has bug holes. And as long as you know that the bugs have been taken care of, this can actually add kind of a nice feature to it to have all those little bug holes in there. But having those holes gives a place for water to go and other things to get into. And I just like to seal it and make it a little bit cleaner. Sometimes you have wood with wild grain and you get all these little micro cracks. Most of the time, I'm not gonna fill the micro cracks. But if I get a larger crack like this that you know, my finger kind of feels and catches on, I might fill that. A lot of times I have this huge, beautiful Beautiful board with great grain on it, but there's this knot. And I'd love to work with this piece, but I, I, I can't because this knot is where I need to be. Well, I could fill that and make this whole piece fully usable. Sometimes there's a little bit of rot uh, where the wood has gotten a bit punky, and you can seal that and fill it up and turn it into a fully usable piece. And sometimes the problem was you, and the joint didn't fully fill up, and there's a bit of a crack. Hmm, maybe we could fill that. And herein lies the first problem. There is not one solution that fixes all of them. Different products are going to need different solutions. Thankfully, unlike wood finishes, it usually comes down to one of three options. The most common one that people generally jump to is epoxy. I can put epoxy into it. And it's kind of become a thing over the last 20 years that epoxy fix all errors. And it does. This is a really, really multi-use thing and you can get all kinds of different epoxies for different applications and it can do the answer most of the time. One of the newer ones, and one I've been leaning towards more, is cyanoacrylate, super glue. And you can get it with different tints in it. You can actually make your own and buy regular CA glue and add a, a tint to it. But for the same price, you can just buy these that come pre-mixed. And I have been using those a lot more. And third is a hot glue stick. Yeah, I could just grab a hot glue gun, put a stick in it, find the color I want and fill it up. Each of these methods have different pros and cons, different places where they work well. A CA glue is not gonna fill a large gap. Hot glue is rather thick, so it doesn't fill into those tiny pores as well. Epoxy can do a lot of different things, but it depends on the type of epoxy you get, and it's often the most expensive, and it's one that requires a little bit more to do in getting it right. I've just recently gotten into hot glue, but it is great for doing these medium voids. It kind of works into the surface, and holds down nicely, and you can fill rather decent chunks with it. Here I'm just using straight black. I would prefer to use a particular color, uh, but this works really well, and I'm just kinda gonna use my tip to work into it. I may come in here with a popsicle stick and just apply it in a little bit better into all of these little cracks. And the nice thing about it is I can heat it up and re-squish it in, but I've been actually rather impressed with how well this works. Now, this stuff is not your normal hot glue stick. It is actually considerably harder. Um, and so when you have a big surface like this, it gives you a nice hard surface you can work on. The downside to it is you need a high heat gun. Um, if you have a gun that's just low heat, it won't do it. If you have a gun that you can adjust high heat or low heat, then you can. Um, but you need a high heat gun. And they do make special ones with little tiny tips that allow you to get into bug holes, which are really nice because you can kind of inject it in. I don't have one of those, so I actually just use this cheap one from Menards. Next up is cyanoacrylate, and I most often use this on bug holes. What I'm gonna do is let it pour into the hole, and I'm just gonna hit a bunch of them like this, and it'll just run in and soak in. I like to use the thin stuff most of the time. And after it goes in, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of activator. Let that sit for a moment, and then come back and add a little bit more in. And that activator will actually kind of clog it up a bit. And particularly because this stuff is so thin, it doesn't tend to leave air bubbles, though occasionally you will still get air bubbles. And like those ones, they keep soaking in, so I gotta hit them with an activator again. 
And then another dose of this. For the CA glue, it comes in different viscosities. I generally like a rather thin one because I want it to fill in. Most of the time I'm using this on little tiny pores, pores that are too small for epoxy or hot glue to get into. This is for the tiny cracks and the micro fractures. And then last we have epoxy. Here I have Total Boat High Performance, and this is more of a structural adhesive, but for doing small pores, I really like using this. It's a relatively standard, everything you can use epoxy. If I'm doing bigger pores, I'm gonna use a thick set epoxy, um, but for average things, I, I generally just use this because I have it on hand for other things, and it works rather well. To add color, I usually go with trans tint dye. I really like the way this goes. This one is a pretty dark one, but I'm only gonna add one or two drops, and then I'm gonna mix it and see what we've got. It does not take much of this at all. That was one drop, and I've got a pretty thick amber color on here. And if I put too much in, the only way I can make it lighter is to add in more epoxy. To fill the void, I put some tape on the back. I generally use Tyvek tape, though in the past I've also used wrestling mat tape. And then the big trick to getting air bubbles out is don't pour the whole thing. Just pour it right down in the middle and keep pouring in that one spot and let the epoxy pour where it needs to. You wanna leave space for air bubbles to come out around it. Sometimes I'll take a stick in the middle, just kinda of agitate it. That will help it to work around. Then as it starts to go down, you can add more. And over the course of the next half hour, 45 minutes, I'll let it sit, but sometimes I'll just pop the bubbles merely for the reason that I can. With the hot glue, you can come under the plane and plane it down the surface. Though I have noticed it tends to smear a little bit and it's not quite as clean as I would like. It does, however, scrape very nicely you left with a really clean surface. Super glue, on the other hand, tends to be just a little bit, and I prefer to come in with a scraper and just scrape that down, left with a really nice clean surface, and you almost quite can't tell where it was. I always love how that comes out. One problem you're often gonna get with a lot of them is you get these micro bubbles that tend to show up afterwards, and you'll find them that, ah, I got problems there. And those can be often difficult to fill. Even when they're side by side, this one's perfectly filled, perfectly filled, perfectly filled. That one's got a little micro bubble in it. And particularly with bug holes, you're gonna be chasing micro bubbles forever. And usually when I'm chasing micro bubbles, I switch over to the thinnest super glue I can find. I really like 2P10 extra thin. Uh, this you can put on top and the bubbles float to the top without any problem. Yes, it's not gonna be tinted, but when they're that small, you're never gonna notice it. And I really like how this thing comes out. So if I have micro bubbles, I'm gonna grab some regular super glue and just put those little couple dots and it cleans up and disappears. Usually for the cleanup on all three of these, my favorite is a card scraper. Uh, you can use the sander, especially on the super glue, sanding works really well. Sanding on the hot glue doesn't always work. It tends to gum them up. Even with the mesh sanders, they just don't work very well. With epoxy, sometimes you can get away with sanding, though most of the time it clogs it up, even with the mesh sanders. And if you're working in wood that's ring porous, then you're gonna be running into the problem of working the dust into the pores, particularly if you try wet sanding because that always ends up horribly. Ah, I hate wet sanding anything that's ring porous. Usually I'm using either super glue or CA, though recently I was sent these by a friend of the channel to try out and let me know, and I actually have been really liking it. For the medium sized holes, using the hot glue works relatively well. And man, is it fast because you just put it in, let it cool down and you clean it off. Uh, it's great. I'm interested to see the durability on them because it is a little bit softer, so I don't think I would use it on pores that are bigger than, say, a quarter inch. But for that quarter inch size, this is fantastic. Usually for the super glue, I'm not going to do any hole that is bigger than an eighth inch. Uh, it just takes too much to fill up, and so this is for micro cracks and micro pores where you need it to run into it. For holes about a half inch or larger, I'm usually going to epoxy. And so that's, that's kind of where the breakdown is. Um, it just depends on how big is the hole, how much is it going to take up, how does it need to get in there deeply, or is it just something that needs to sit on the top? But as I said in the beginning, the first question you have to ask is, do I actually need to fill the hole? And a lot of times it is, no. Then why even mess with it? I know, that makes this whole video kind of pointless. So I will leave links to all of these in the description, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is there something different that you try that maybe I should try out? I'd love to hear that. I'm always finding new things, like particularly with the, uh, the hot glue sticks. It's something I've wanted to try for a while, but uh, until they were sent to me to play with, I'd never thought of it. So thank you, and this was actually sent to me by a patron of the channel. 
Speaking of patrons, in a couple moments, you're going to see them scrolling over here on the side. Without patrons, uh, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer. So thank you for being a patron. And if you do ever meet anyone who's going to be scrolling over here, tell them thank you. And if you would like to help us out without even spending any money, then throw a comment down in the description down below. Let me know what type do you use? Uh, what have you tried that has worked really well in the past? I love hearing that. And I learn a lot of stuff from the, from the comments down below. So thank you. That does help us. It helps the channel get in front of more people, helps us grow, as well as hitting the like, share, subscribing. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, it means more than I can say. So thank you, patrons. Thank you to everyone who comments. And I think they'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. So we've got CA, we've got hot glue, we have epoxy. Oh, I know what I need. Ah! I, I can always yell into the void. <laughs>